Hey guys, welcome back to Ellis Vintage Design. How's everyone doing? I hope you're having an amazing day. Today we are going to talk about vintage perfume bottles. And the reason I wanted to talk about those is I recently saw an article about how one from the 80s hadn't been opened and it was still good. And that kind of blew my mind until I started researching vintage perfume bottles. And there is a lot that goes into a vintage perfume bottle. So I thought we could talk about vintage perfume bottles. And I have a whole bunch of notes here for you guys. A whole bunch of notes. So let's start with what is even considered a vintage perfume bottle. And that is, experts consider 40 years old to be vintage in perfumes. So we're talking 1984. That's the first year a vintage perfume bottle would start. So what are some perfumes from 1984? Well, I will put some up. Coco, a women's perfume by French fashion house Chanel, Introduced in 1984, it was created by Chanel in-house perfumer Jacques Poulet. So what was another early 80s perfume? Because I know the one I'm thinking about. You had Poison, Obsession, Beautiful. In fact, I still have bottles of Beautiful, but they're not from the 80s. Polo, and who remembers Baby Soft? Baby Soft perfume, 80s, what year? The Baby Soft, the Loves Baby Soft perfume debuted in 1974, which is probably why I know a word in the early 80s. So those are some popular names. I mean, Beautiful, Poison, Polo by Ralph Lauren, all those, those, that was the smell the guys in my high school smelled like. Crazy to think about. So there are some very famous vintage perfumes from the 80s. The 80s just rocked, guys. Sorry. How long does perfume last? Well, opened can last up to two years. So if you find a vintage bottle of perfume and it's been opened, it's probably going to be very dark, not full, and it's probably not going to smell quite right. But if it hasn't been opened, if it's been sealed, it still may not be as full because the water in the perfume will have evaporated or the alcohol in the perfume will have evaporated. So the color may be more intense, but the smell might just be okay. It totally depends how was it stored? How was it, it wasn't open? How was it stored? You know, was it cool and dry out in a dark spot? Or was it hot and out in the sun, you know, exposed to a lot of heat and humidity? So those things will determine if your perfume is going to smell good or not. Now, how many of you go to estate sales and you see gorgeous vintage bottles of perfume but they don't smell very good right because they've been opened and probably that was their purpose to be used how many of you ever found a vintage bottle unopened in the packaging and everything very rare but sometimes you do sometimes you wander into that home where that lady of the house had saved 20 boxes of her favorite perfume because she stockpiled when they said they were going to stop making it and there's a ton of it and it's still really good now because there's more of it does that mean it's not as valuable i think it's like anything else vintage okay what people are willing to pay for it determines how valuable something is and that's true with anything today Antique perfume bottles that are in light new condition, no chips or cracks, can be worth thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. 
So if you stumble into that estate sale and there's two or three bottles unopened at the back of the cabinet, you know, that that lady of the house was saving, you might want to have them appraised or at least do your research. You could have just hit the jackpot. How to tell if a bottle is vintage. And I'm not talking about the liquid. I'm talking about just the bottle. And there's a lot of ways. Etch numbers on the bottom or the bottom of the stopper. Because after a certain time period, they didn't etch numbers anymore. Labels. If the label on the perfume is still there and it has the initials TDSP, which is a substantive patent. I can't read my writing. Is an old treaty stamp, TDSP. It's from the 30s and 40s. If it says made in Japan, made in occupied Japan, it was between 1945 and 1949. If it has a patent number, patent numbers on perfume balls was from the 30s and 40s. Stamps on bottles. 70s, there were colored stamps, numbers, letters on the bottom of bottles. Art Nouveau style labels in boxes, 1900 to 1920s. Art Deco bottles in boxes, mid-20s to 1940s. Psychedelic boxes in bottles, 60s and 70s. Sample bottles were the 50s. To, it was called samples, not for resale, but a sample. If it says tester, that's from today. If your bottle states return bottle, it's national, return the bottle, it's your national duty. That's between 1940 and 1945, World War II. Created, compounded, assembled, those words, 1950s. If it has an EAM barcode, that's after 1989. If it says specially denatured alcohol, that's the 40s and 50s. If there's a zip code on your bottle anywhere, that's 1962 and above. Before 1937, there were no zip codes. If there's a degree symbol on your bottle, that equals the percentage of the alcohol in the bottle. And that was after the 1950s. Black Bacolite caps from the 1960s. Lucite caps from the 1930s. Glass stoppers from the 1870s to the 1920s. Gold tone plastic screw caps, 1940s. Gold tone metal screw caps, 1920s. 1992 and later, there's a recycle symbol on the bottle. 1998 to 2003, there's a short ingredient list. After 2003, there's a long ingredient list. If there's a company address, use that to find out where it was manufactured, what manufa perfumes were manufactured there. If it's a dram, it's the 30s and 40s. And so there is a lot <clears throat> of information out there and there's a lot of information that a bottle of vintage perfume can tell you you just have to know how to read your bottles I just thought it was interesting and I thought we would touch on it here I might keep my eye out for vintage perfume the next time I go out the only thing with me and vintage perfume or today's perfume is that I have migraine and a migraine does not like perfume, no matter what year it is. So guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button with that little bell. And I will see you back on Monday. Take care.